Hey, what is going on guys? It's time to take a look at another of the Petitrits Fate Grand Order kits. Now this one is the Saber Okita Soji kit. Now not too long ago we just took a look at two of them just came out. The Master Female Protagonist and also the Saber uh, Miyamoto Musashi kits. So this is another version of Saber here. And this one as well looks pretty cool. Definitely the outfit is not quite, not quite as intricate, not quite as ornate as the Musashi version, but this one does still look pretty cool and it also has a, a really cool sword weapon for this one as well. So cool box art as always with this kind of wintry look to this. She doesn't certainly seem like she's dressed for winter, but that's okay. It's got to be cute Japanese style anyway. And as always guys, if you're interested in these petite dress kits or anything, check the link down in the video description to US at Gundam Store. You can save 10% off everything there using my coupon code ZAKORILIUS10. And these kits really aren't that expensive, but you can still save a little bit of money on them and everything else again of course. But the kits usually go for around $13-$14 or something like that for them, so not too bad uh, for these. They're relatively simple though, as we've seen with other releases so far. They're just kind of little sort of SD kits that don't really do a whole lot, but they do still look pretty nice. So. Of course we got the different color molding there, we got no glue required, and with the items she's just got her sword, and then the display base here which is just in blue it looks like in this case, and you got some uh, cool like logo there on the base, but as I said with the past couple of releases, definitely painting the base is going to make them look a little bit nicer. So. You just got the sword and the scabbard for the sword there as her accessories and then just some nice details which I'm sure is going to be made up with plenty of stickers as usual but they do end up still looking pretty nice though. For the actions basically you have a couple of different poses that you can do with this. The legs and the torso really not a whole lot of articulation usually with those. You have a little bit more articulation in the arms and then the head is just on a ball joint usually so not really a whole lot you can do with them but we'll try our best here. There is no good or bad on the battlefield, only death. Certainly a very morbid expression for such a cute looking character here, but alright. So these are about 10 centimeters tall. On the other side of the box, you're giving you like an actual size look at how the kit is gonna how big the kit is gonna be when it's actually all built up. And this is the illustration or at least photos of the kit without any paint or anything on it. So just without any paint, here's how it's gonna look. Not too bad, you know, still missing some colors there obviously, but not too bad. Alright, let's pop open the box and it looks like as usual, we're just going to have two runners, a multicolor runner and a solid runner. So we'll take a look at those momentarily. Let's just take a quick look at the manual here first. So at the top of the manual, we've got another character illustration and then our parts list, just the A runner, the B runner and the stickers. And then this just folds out into our construction. So you build the head and the face first and then the body here on the front. And then down here, we also have our color guide that's there in Japanese and in English if you want to check that out. And going on to the back is where we're going to then build up the arms and the legs and then finish up the body assembly and then the weapon's going to be pretty straightforward. It's just a couple of parts there for that and then how to uh, complete the assembly by mounting her onto the base. So pretty simple. Let's get a look at the runners here. Alright, and no regular sort of like uh, thin clear stickers for this kit. We just have the one foil sticker sheet here, which as you can see, stickers there for the eyes, and then a few other stickers there for the sword as well, and then just a couple of stickers going around for her body, so not not too bad compared to some of the other kits in the line so far. Then runner A, again, it looks like to be in four colors, a little bit hard to tell because the hair color and the skin color are pretty close, but the hair is a little bit darker, and then some white up there across the top, and then some nice kind of satin black over there on the side, it looks pretty good. And and then runner B is in a kind of teal blue color. Looks very proper color for if this was a Miku kit actually to be honest, but there's the base. And yeah, the base does look pretty nice, but once that's painted it'll certainly look better. And then the clothing parts around here, so that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and get her built up and we'll see how she looks. Alright, and then so here is how she's going to look. Well first just take a look real quick before we put the actual weapons in hand just so you guys can focus on just how the figure itself looks, how the kit itself looks before you give it the weapons. Although the accessories are certainly part of it, I just thought I'd give you guys a look at it before that. Uh, and then we'll also just quickly take a look at some of the articulation and a closer look at the stickers as well. But overall building the kit, I mean it was pretty standard. I have now built, uh, let's see, what is this? This is the sixth one in the series so far. So the sixth time building this, I've got a pretty good feel for them. This one, not very different in any way really. So there wasn't anything too necessarily new or exciting about this build, but it is pretty simple just like the rest of them and went together pretty quickly. And these kits really don't take too much time at all to put together. And the end result, even with using the stickers, I think still not very bad. I mean, they look all right. So first off, just on the subject of the base, once again, the arm for the base where it connects onto the leg, it like holds the kit up slightly above the level of the base. So if you don't have it balanced just right, she can still fall off of there quite easily. So 
These bases, just like the arm for that, sort of works as a good support, but also sort of not that much. Alright, so those stickers are, once again, just here for the eyes. Nothing on the body, actually. That black, blue, white, that's all just parts there for that middle section of the clothes, so that's pretty cool. But then here, all around on the side of the arms there, that's stickers. There's two on each arm on the inside and outside of the sleeve. It's like a big sticker with blue and white that wraps around there for those triangle bits. Probably would have been better if each individual triangle was a separate sticker. It would have been more work and more annoying to put all those on there, but you wouldn't have had that blue, obviously not matching like the main blue for clothes there, or it's like a noticeable line between them. And then on the back of the hands, you have a sticker on this part for the back of each hand. And then down here for the feet, you have a sticker that goes over the front and one sticker that goes around here on the back to look like her feet like within the shoes within the slippers there but this one here on the front it's supposed to look like like toe details like from a distance it looks fine but up close it doesn't look that good it looks pretty bad but as for the articulation it's pretty normal the head will go up and down it's just on a ball joint here but i find that because of these scarf bits out the back those actually block the head from moving too far back because they're right up underneath her hair and these fall off really easily as you can see it's just a ball and socket joint that's like not even a fully enclosed socket there so it just kind of sits on there and if you touch it the wrong way it falls off quite easily but yeah that those being there kind of inhibits the head from going back too far you can really only get it to about there other heads usually could look up a little bit more uh, this ponytail here in the back can be moved around it's not like fixed in into a position and so you can move that i guess if you wanted to that can maybe help in a little bit in making some sort of dynamic looking pose and the arms are just on a connected in there via a ball joint you can bring the arm up a little bit more than 90 degrees there so that's actually pretty good you have a point of rotation there in the middle of the upper arm you have to be careful because i find it usually just pops out the the ball out of the socket there but that's pretty tight so that will rotate there and see one of the scarf bits just fell out again. At the elbow, you're gonna have it right about 90 degrees bend there for that, and then the hand is just on a little ball joint. And yeah, not only do the scarfs keep popping out, but this shoulder joint keeps popping out as well because it's set in there, and kind of deep in there, or just because the part of the clothes is pretty like sticking out around there. So if you move the arm around too much, it's quite easy to just pop that out of the socket. So just be a little bit careful with that. For the legs, they're attached uh, via ball joints up in there. So you're not going to be able to move those around too much within this space, but you can sort of move them just a little bit. There's no joint in the knee. And then down at the ankle, you have that just also attached on a ball joint. So you can move the feet a little bit around, but not really too much once again. So just just a little bit to be able to alter the pose slightly. For the sword scabbard, I mean, surprisingly no stickers at all for this. I would have thought maybe a sticker was just for, like, for this little ribbon part or something, but that kind of would have been hard to cover up that whole thing. And then the sword though does have a couple stickers on it. So the gold sticker there around the base of that and then for the main blade, obviously the both sides of that you'll cover up with a sticker and then kind of fold it up around the edges. So that just slots into her hand there and then the scabbard is just held in the other hand here. And unfortunately no other hand options for this and no way, at least with the kit just as it is to, to plug the scabbard like onto her side or something, but you could very easily just modify this and make your own peg or something to just stick that onto there if you wanted but the problem is with the hands you don't have any other hand options if you didn't want to have her actually holding on to this then you just have like a weird hand that just doesn't look right if it's not holding anything you also notice where the sword is supposed to go in there there's no hole at all so you might want to drill that out or modify that a little bit so it looks like there's actually a hole there where the sword is supposed to go in and then once again for a quick size comparison compare with your average hg size gunpla kit and with the other different saber kit now as i understand it you guys all mentioned in the comments that saber is not actually the character's name but actually a class in the game apparently again i know nothing about the game i know nothing about fate but yeah two different saber kits there side by side they look pretty cool. So that's gonna pretty much do it for this kit. Once again, the verdict is pretty much the same on these. They're not for everyone, certainly, but if you're looking for something different, if you're just building robots all the time, you want something different to build that's not gonna cost you a whole lot, it's pretty cheap, pretty simple, it doesn't take a whole lot of time either, but it's just something interesting and cool. You can just build it up just straight out the box and put it up on the shelf. I think they're gonna look pretty nice. Or if it is something that you wanna sink a little bit more time into, you can like fully paint it up and everything bring out all the nice details in the kit and that's gonna look even better of course so whether you're a fan of the series and you really like the character then I would definitely recommend checking out at least one of the kits in the line maybe your favorite character if it's out yet although there's I'm sure a ton of characters that Banda has not yet made I know you guys usually on these videos you let me know in the comment section 
all the different characters that you guys would like to see, that you're hoping for to see. And I'm still enjoying the kits enough that I'm still hoping that Bandai keeps up with the line and keeps making some more of them. They're pretty cool little kits. But and again, even if you're not really a fan of the series like me, uh, but you just want something different to build, then I'd just, again, I'd say I'd recommend checking out one of the kits. Maybe just pick out the one that you think it looks the coolest to you, even if you don't really know anything about the characters or anything, just pick out one. It looks cool and, and check it out. They're pretty interesting kits. So that's pretty much it, guys. Again, thank you to BSA Gundam Store for their support. If you do have any other further questions or comments, do feel free to ask there down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.